by having SAB 121, it makes it harder for banks, who are the, the, the entities that are kind of most suited to uh, bringing stability to the digital asset industry, it, it kind of keeps them out. Um, it it kind of keeps them out. Um, All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another CyperX video breakdown today. This is going to be an educational video breakdown on what is causing inflow and outflow of the digital asset space, why the majority of everyone's portfolio is down, how we were able to track this in the CyperX private chat, letting you guys know well in advance how to prepare for certain market conditions well ahead of the retail crowd, right? The majority of investors in the Twitter space and the YouTube space have been doing nothing but touting bullish price action for the past couple of weeks, ever since the Ripple versus SEC case came into fruition. However, that is an unrealistic perspective to have in the market, considering the geopolitical tensions and ongoing war escalations on a macro environment, along with global central banks all over the world, having a high interest rate environment and understanding that impact in the market and how it sets certain market conditions for investor sentiment, where the capital inflows and outflows are more oriented towards, i.e. the US dollar and gold as a safe haven asset via the recent ongoing escalations that we saw over the weekend with Israel and whatnot. Okay, so this is all stuff and information that we've been attempting to talk about in the CyperX private chat. So just being transparent with you guys, showing you all how being informed in a community can set you up on the right side of the market. So let's just say, for example, you're a dollar cost averager because a lot of people don't take a day trading approach. And the people that do take a dollar cost average approach think that they don't need to understand fundamentals and they don't need to learn this stuff. However, learning this information and having a better educational awareness of what causes inflows and outflows of capital into the cryptocurrency market can you know, set you up for better dollar cost average positions. For example, remember in the CyperX chat, I told you guys, here's a the XRP private analysis. I said to you guys, in order for XRP to thrive, by the way, this was sent days in advance. So this was sent on October 9th. Today is October 12th. So this was well in advance before the data today came out. I said, in order for XRP to thrive, it is imperative that the Federal Reserve adopts a more dovish tone during this meeting that's coming up on Thursday, as this would favor riskier assets should the inflation data reveal a trend towards lower than anticipated levels, signaling a potential cooling off in inflationary pressures, coupled with a surge in unemployment claims compared to prior figures, it could trigger a sell-off in the U.S. dollar, thereby fostering a favorable environment for riskier sensitive assets like crypto. However, on the flip side, conversely, I said, an inverse outcome would be with inflation data exceeding expectations and a declining unemployment claim might bolster the U.S. dollar's value, potentially leading to sell-off in riskier assets and an increased demand for the dollar, which is exactly what we saw today. So do you see how being a part of a community that actually educates their students on what causes inflows and outflows of the market, you could have better situated yourself in this space. So check this out. Literally word for word, I put this sentence out almost four days in advance, word for word, and look what comes out. You see here, what came out today, higher than expected US September CPI data and lower than expected unemployment claims reignites discussion about further Fed rate hikes. It's literally word for word what I told you guys days in advance. This would cause a sell-off in riskier assets. Look, conversely, the inverse outcome with inflation data exceeding expectations, right? That's number one. So we saw inflation data come out higher, right? And then unemployment claims come out lower than previous and expected. And that's the same exact thing I told you guys that would cause a sell-off in riskier assets. So knowing this information and seeing how ahead of the curve, it could have potentially negatively impacted price instead of dollar cost averaging on the 9th of October, when I told you all this information, you could have waited till today when the data came out to now better situate yourselves at lower discounted prices to scoop up more units of whatever cryptocurrency you're looking to DCA into. You guys see how that gives you an educational advantage instead of just chasing hype and crap on Twitter and YouTube, right? Bullish Moon Boy price predictions. This is the CyperX advantage right here to understand fundamentals directly and indirectly and how they're going to impact price either positively or negatively. So today, 
Dollar gains after U.S. consumer price rises more than expected, which we had been anticipating as a potential outcome of this data for now days. I even told you guys that if we stay suppressed below 50 cents, we're most likely going to see lower price targets of the high 40s to maybe even potentially low 40s coming into that 38 to 42 cent psychological level on XRP if we stay suppressed underneath the 50 cents. That has of now has come into fruition. We tapped all the way back down into about 47 cents. We're still saying staying suppressed under 50 cents. So we're monitoring this price action closely. I have alarm set underneath the 50, uh, sorry, excuse me, the 46 cent delta zone to potentially come and clear out some of this trend line liquidity, maybe potentially get a nice liquidity wick to the downside. That would be nice. I would scoop up some discount buying opportunities. I'll let you guys know. I'll give you a screenshot and send it to the private chat. Okay. But again, I just want to show you all via an educational webinar, why it's important and it's imperative for you all to understand market conditions. Because until we see true utility kick into the market, which I have a firm belief will happen most likely in another year to two years from now, we are going to continuously see these price upswings where investors, larger investors than you and I, are going to be taking profit after these pumps. Because right now we are in a speculative trading environment where market sentiment is driven by data-induced events, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, risk on, risk off, off market mood, and understanding these things, you can better situate yourself on the right side of the market. So one of the main factors, aside from these data-induced fundamentals that have come out surrounding the US dollar recently, another thing that we're seeing that's weighing on the cryptocurrency market is the uncertain regulatory environment. This just came out yesterday, where this bill put out by the SEC, long story short, it's a new bipartisan bill aiming to tear up rules that make crypto custody completely non-viable as a business model for bank and institutions. This is bad. OK, because while everybody in the mainstream is touting that institutional adoption is going to flood into the space, the SEC and the regulators in the United States are making it extremely hard for financial institutions to participate in this digital asset ecosystem, which is, again, bad temporarily. It's going to get resolved eventually. But right now, knowing this information on top of seeing positive data come out for the U.S., you can then do what as a dollar cost averager? Keep capital on the sidelines for further discounted prices. Again, situating yourself on the right side of the market to benefit during this bear market. So this was another factor weighing on the cryptocurrency market this week is we're seeing uncertain regulatory um, announcements still flood into this space where it's hard for institutions to flood into this space because there's no clear regulation on what it is that they can participate in, safe places where they can store their digital assets. We know that they're not going to want to store them in-house. They're going to want to use a third car, a third party custody provider. And right now, that's seen as an unviable business model, okay, as of time of recording this video. Who, could that change in two days? Sure, absolutely. It's a rapidly evolving landscape. But knowing that information today, along with positive data coming out for the U.S., you could have waited patiently to now dollar cost average at further discounted prices. So let's go over this in detail. I just want to explain to you guys, from my perspective, typing all this information out for you guys, giving you a nice little visual display on Canva, how I was able to gauge this information, right? Just studying fundamentals and understanding how they're going to impact crypto, because we know that crypto is a risk on asset. So let's go over that. Let me share my screen with you guys and head over to Canva real quick. All right. I just want to give you guys as much information as possible so that way you can become better investors, you can become better traders. None of this is financial advice, but I'm just showing you guys how in our private community, there are opportunities for you to capitalize on furthering your education by reading the prompts, by reading the analysis that I give you guys that is correct week after week after week. I don't think since I started the monthly subscription program, I've sent you guys an incorrect analysis of price action yet. So that means that there's been over six weeks in a row, back to back to back. I've sent you guys over 100 pip analysis trades. I've sent you guys fundamental analysis that keeps you in the loop of what's going to happen via price action way ahead of the retail hype. And if you're not paying attention to it, then you're just sleeping on your own potential. Okay, so check this out. Let's go over interest rates in the Federal Reserve. So the Federal Reserve, often referred to as the Fed, this is going to be a very you know straight to the point breakdown so you guys can understand to use this to your advantage and your knowledge curve moving forward. The Fed is the central bank of the United States. Most likely you already know that. It's responsible for regulating the country's monetary policy. And one of the key tools at its disposal is the management of interest rates. When the Fed raises interest, interest rates, it generally leads to several outcomes that impact cryptocurrency markets. An increased demand for the U.S. dollar. Higher interest rates make holding the U.S. dollar more attractive to investors. 
As the returns on the U.S. dollar dominated investments rise, the demand for the greenback or i.e. the dollar also increases. That's nine times out of 10 what happens, right? Consequently, investors may move their funds out of cryptocurrencies and into the U.S. dollar to benefit from higher yields and lower risk. There's also a reduced risk appetite when this takes place. We know that cryptocurrencies are often considered risk on assets. That means that when they, they tend to perform well, excuse me, in a risk on market condition. When the Fed raises interest rates, it can signal a more risk adverse environment or a risk off market mood, which leads investors to shy away from riskier assets like cryptocurrencies. This shift in sentiment can therefore lead to a decline in crypto prices, which is what we saw temporarily today. So remember, right now we are in a speculative trading environment. In the future, maybe a year, two years, maybe three years from now, that is all set to change once utility kicks in for these underlying assets like XRP, XLM, XDC, HBAR. You guys catch the drift. But right now, if you go back and you look at the charts, you look at the price swings, you look at the last bull market, and you look at when the bear market started in November 2021, these were all caused by data-induced events. So with that being said, as retail investors that are seeking to gain an advantage in this market, it will only behoove you to understand this information and to not fight it. If you try to fight it and you think that it's irrelevant and it doesn't matter, you will continuously get wrecked left and right in this market, dollar cost averaging into positions, and consistently seeing a decline in your portfolio. I promise you that. If you think this is irrelevant information, then you have no understanding of how the financial markets actually move and operate. Okay. You need to have a better approach. It's like saying you want to be a doctor, right? But then not understanding how to perform a surgery. That doesn't make any sense. Well, most market participants come into the space seeking for high returns, but they don't even know how the market moves up and down. They just want to gamble. Here at CyperX, we don't attempt to approach that the market that way. And we hope that our students and our people that are involved in our community don't either. So that way you can better situate yourself in the market. It's not hard, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So what else took place? We had low unemployment claims and labor market sentiment improve. So low unemployment claims that came out today can have a positive impact on the labor market sentiment, strengthening the US dollar and potentially weakening the cryptocurrency market. Here's how this works. The labor market sentiment. When unemployment claims are low, which came out today, remember I mentioned to you guys, if the unemployment claims come out lower than anticipated, remember on last night's live Zoom call, I told you guys, what were the unemployment claim data numbers projected to come out? Let's go over to Forex Factory real quick. I told you guys, I think it was like um, 207 was the previous. Yeah, 20, 20, oh, excuse me, 209 was the previous. 211 was the anticipated or the forecast. And the data came out lower than the forecast, came out at 209,000, right? So lower than anticipated. A strong labor market indicates that more people are employed and have disposable income, increasing consumer spending. This in turn can lead to a stronger US dollar as the domestic economy is viewed favorably. Now, obviously, of course, this is all temporary. This is not long-term. This is all temporary. This is what causes the short-term fluctuations in the cryptocurrency market. Now, a strong dollar effect. The strong dollar can decrease the appeal of cryptocurrencies temporarily for international investors. This is because cryptocurrencies are often seen as an alternative to fiat currencies, especially when investors are concerned about a weaker dollar. In a robust labor market, a strong dollar can undermine the relative attractiveness of cryptocurrencies. It also creates a reduced risk appetite. So similar to the impact of high interest rates, a stronger labor market sentiment can lead to a risk-averse environment where investors may become more conservative, favoring safe haven assets like the US dollar over riskier cryptocurrencies, which is exactly why over the last 24 hours, in particular, we've seen an inflow of capital into the US dollar and an outflow of capital into, or sorry, out of cryptocurrencies, okay? So again, we talked about this well in advance, over four days in advance in a private community. So this is how you could have situated yourself better in the market. I even told you guys four days ago that I had capital on the sidelines to implement to the market in case this data came out positive for the US and we saw a decline in cryptocurrencies. Now having that capital on the side, now seeing how these fundamental data points affected the whole entire market today, I can now make a decision whether I want to implement that capital at discounted prices and have a better you know, feeling an approach to the market rather than having put my money in the market four days ago and now seeing maybe, let's just say hypothetically speaking, it was $1,000 I wanted to put in the market. Well, if you go over to the charts, okay, remember we're in a bear market. So if you can take steps and initiatives to improve your market mood, 
during this bear market? Because what are they attempting to do right now? They're attempting to shake you out. So if you can take steps to improve your mood in the market by seeing an increase in your portfolio during the bear market, why would you not attempt to do that? Had we have put money in the market days ago, let's just say, for example, when XRP was at 52 cents, instead of waiting for this data to come out, our portfolio would be down over 9% right now, right? I don't know anybody in this market that came into this market to lose money. If you came into this market to lose money, then hop off this call right now. I don't know what your market approach is. I, I don't know what to tell you because that's not how I teach people in the market, right? I've never met anybody online that says, oh yeah, I'm going to teach you how to lose money. No, that doesn't make any sense, right? Now let's move on. So just looking at the charts, you guys know, let's go to the monthly time frame. okay? You guys know that the entire crypto winter pretty much started, if you go look at Bitcoin and you look at when Bitcoin in particular, I like the Bitcoin charts because they're a lot cleaner. Okay, we went over this entire breakdown where I went over the market cycles on Bitcoin in detail, but I particularly focused in on when the bear market started. Because if you look at when Bitcoin topped out, excuse me, my alarm is going off for discounted prices on HBAR. Look at that. Would you see? If, I mean, it's beautiful, right? It's beautiful. So if you look at when the bear market started on Bitcoin back in November 2021, it is the same, the data points link up at the same exact time that the Federal Reserve started announcing interest rate hikes at the same exact time that they, for the first time, announced spotting Russian troops on the Ukrainian border. You find that interesting, right? So think about it. If you look at the market cycles, you guys can see the Bitcoin charts right here. Back in July 2021, where price topped out in November 2021, if you go back and you correlate all the fund all the fundamentals from that data point from those from those dates, all of them read 100k Bitcoin, 80k Bitcoin, $200,000 Bitcoin. That was the market again creating a bull trap. The smart money once these data points and the war was announced and the Federal Reserve started hiking interest rates, they knew. They knew where the money was going to flow into and flow out of. And that was to the U.S. dollar as a safe haven during times of war escalation and geopolitical tension, right? And if you go look at the same exact date that the dollar started to increase in value, it's the same exact date that Bitcoin started to tank and decline in value. The dates are exactly correlated, okay? And so what's going on right now? What happened over the weekend? Geopolitical tensions and war escalations, right? With this whole Israeli conflict and, and stuff that's going on. I'm not going to sit here and try and educate people on what's going on with that. You guys can go do research. But we know that that took place over the weekend, okay? So not only are we still seeing a rates higher for longer environment, which causes sell pressure on digital assets, but also we're seeing an uptick in geopolitical tensions. We know that the entire bear market started with geopolitical tensions and war escalations with Russia and Ukraine. So why in the right in anybody's right mind would you think that we're going to see new all-time highs in 2023 on digital assets if just 2 days ago a new war was announced? Right? What are you seeing? What did we see over the weekend? Remember we projected this in the private community. We said gold buys on Give me a second. Let me pull up the gold charts. We announced to you guys in the chat, well in advance, in the gold private chat, that we were looking for gold buys for price to come up into the 1980s, right? I even gave you guys a physical screenshot. Days later, you can see that came into fruition to the freaking T. How are we able to gauge this? By understanding where money is going to flow into during times of geopolitical uncertainty and war tensions, and gold is one of those assets. Right. So if you go look at gold and you look at the charts and you look at where price action opened up over the weekend, you can see right down here. Here is the Friday close. Here's the Sunday, Monday gap rollover. All the money because of the geopolitical attentions rolled over into gold, which solidified its safe haven status. Right. Causing an outflow of capital and cryptocurrency assets, which are more riskier assets. So let's go over that part. So these are factors that are weighing on cryptocurrencies. We have high interest rates low unemployment data, okay, or sorry, excuse me, high inflation data, low unemployment data, low unemployment claims, excuse me, and geopolitical tensions, geopolitical war scares, right? War escalation. 
So war escalation, I wrote for you guys. If we head back over to Canva so you guys can see. Geopolitical tension and war escalation can have a profound impact on the financial markets, leading to a shift in investor sentiment and capital allocation. During times of uncertainty and conflict, investors often seek refuge in safe haven assets like gold. Also silver and platinum and other assets as well, but gold in particular we're going to focus on. Now, gold as a safe haven asset in geopolitical tensions. Safe haven assets are investments. If you don't know, time to educate yourself, that are considered to be relatively stable and resistant to market volatility. They tend to retain or increase in value during times of economic or geopolitical uncertainty. And gold is one of the most well-known safe haven assets for the following reasons. Historically, it is reliable. It is reliable. Throughout history, gold has maintained its value and purchasing power, making it a reliable store of wealth during times of crises. Investors often turn to gold as a long-term established safe haven. Limited supply. The scarcity of a gold contributes to its value. Unlike fiat currency that can be printed in abundance, gold has a finite supply, which prevents significant inflation of its value during a crisis. Its inherent tangibility. Gold is a physical asset, and its tangibility offers a sense of security for investors who appreciate having tangible assets that can physically be held, stored, and... So, why geopolitical tensions drive demand for gold? Risk aversion. Geopolitical tensions and war escalations create an atmosphere of uncertainty and risk. Remember, crypto, you have to understand what type of assets you're involving yourself with. What type of asset is cryptocurrency considered? A risk on asset. That means they tend to appreciate in value when the market mood favors risk. So if there's an ongoing geopolitical escalation with war tensions, that's most likely going to cause what? a risk off market mood and drive demand for safe haven. So knowing that, right? Knowing that over the weekend is exactly why I told you guys to be paying attention to the escalations that took place in Israel. Because if this is all serious, which it played out to be, right? It's going to cause an outflow of crypto, which we saw and an inflow of capital into assets like gold, which is exactly what we saw, which is how we were able to predict price predictions of price coming up into the 1852 to the 1880 psych level which where now you can see investors are taking profit, literally tapped our delta zones to the freaking T.